Welcome to our series, Moving America Forward. Each week we'll be focusing on America's entrepreneurs as they take us to new roads, new opportunities, new ways to fill the gaps left by today's failing companies. Our series will be looking at that and a lot more. So come with me and watch as the entrepreneurs of our nation move into the future. And I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studios in Los Angeles with our guests today who are guests from a unique little small town in Iowa called Fairfield. This really is an interesting story about a small town that can really prove you can be successful and have a great quality of life without having to move to the big city. In this town, over the course of a number of years, more than 400 new jobs have been created. It has been, been uh, kind of nicknamed Silicon Valley. Uh, it's a remarkable story, and we're about to hear from it from the mayor of Fairfield. I'd like you to meet him. On my left right now, Ed Malloy, who is the mayor of Fairfield, and on his left, Rustin Livicott, who is the head of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to welcome you here. We feel honored to have you with us. Thank you, Doug. It's a pleasure to be here. You are more than welcome. Uh, let me point out, a little while ago, you had a chance to answer some questions from William Shatner. Let's pause for a moment, take a brief look at a portion of that, sure. and then we'll continue, all right? Sure. Yeah, let's watch. It's not easy to succeed in today's competitive world. Describe for me, briefly, what it is you do and why you think you've been successful. And does that have anything to do with moving America forward? Mr. Shatner, as mayor of the city of Fairfield, Iowa, I work every day to keep our city thriving and moving forward from energy conservation to entrepreneurship to arts and culture. Fairfield is setting the example that a small city can truly be a destination to live out the American dream. You know, that really is, you, you make it sound so appealing. Tell me a little bit about Fairfield. I know it's a small town, but how small? Fairfield is about 9,500 in population, and we are a county seat. We are in the middle of the great agricultural uh, corn and soybean fields of Iowa. And, um, but we're a city that, that has a distinctive character to it. Um, we live more like a cosmopolitan area. We have a very diversified economy. As you had mentioned, there have been over uh, 400 new companies created over the last three decades. Many of them have grown into uh, larger companies. We have um, a very distinctive arts and cultural scene within our downtown. It's a very livable place. And, you know, Iowa is just uh, such a wonderful, welcoming uh, place to live already. So the way we've kind of created and redefined rural living in this way is uh, something different, something extraordinary. Yeah, tell me where you, what you're near. I mean, are you near any really major population center or not? Because 9,500 people, and I grew up in small towns right. and little, that's not a lot of people. It's pretty small. Well, our capital, Des Moines, is a little under two hours away. That metro area is about 300,000. And we're right. about four hours equidistant from Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, uh, Omaha and Minneapolis is five hours away. So. And is that important, the fact that you're close to those areas? Or is it the fact that most of the people in Fairfield are really living and thriving in Fairfield? They don't need the big cities. They don't need the big cities. Uh, there are many people from big cities who have moved to Fairfield, migrated to Fairfield. And uh, what we've created in Fairfield, both within the uh, economy and the entrepreneurial culture and in the area of arts and culture, there are elements of the big city that you can feel in our small town. So mm -hmm. I think people are very satisfied where they live. You know, one of the things, and I think it's one of the things that brought you out there, is there is a university. It's a university town. There are students there. Tell me about that. There's a university that uh, has been there 40 years now where the students practice transcendental meditation. It's called Maharishi University of Management. The students practice meditation along with their traditional studies. The university is a fully accredited university, mm -hmm. and it has been a bit of a magnet, a draw for people from all over the country and really all over the world who practice TM as well. Okay. So there is that aspect. You talk about the cultural aspect of the, you know, you, look, I've got the head of the Conventions Bureau here, right here. Tell me about that aspect of Fairfield. Well, you know, Doug, Fairfield is like any other Midwestern town, you know, with the town square right out of the Music Man, but it lives a little different. Uh, it has, you know, the budding artist community. We have the art galleries, and we have a once a month festival of uh, an art walk, and then we have a performance venue that really provides 
uh, you know, our, our many residents that are, that are artists, visual and performing artists, an opportunity to, to show their craft. And, and it, really, it really improves the quality of life. It, it gives people an opportunity to live in a small town but have the amenities of, of a larger community. Do they? Do you put on shows like mini Broadway shows and things of that nature? You know, we do, and, and that's what's neat having having the Stephen Sondheim Center for the Performing Arts is where we have the the traveling performances, the traveling the traveling, touring shows, the touring shows from L.A. and New York, right? And it's a town of nine ninety five hundred, so it's a ten minute drive, uh, most anywhere in Fairfield. But then it's yeah. also an opportunity for our, our friends and neighbors of art, you know, the art community to come and be stars on the stage. I'm probably going to ask you, how's the traffic in Fairfield? <laughs> uh, traffic is not an issue in Fairfield, uh, that's, that's for sure. In fact, when we, cha we recently changed our four-lane road to a three-lane road just to <laughs> kind of reduce you a downsized. little bit. Yes, we downsized. Oh, that's funny. That's the, that's the first. I haven't heard that before. Um, you are also really kind of pretty sophisticated when, when it comes to advancement, especially, and talk about the internet aspect and what you've done there, because the city is, you're wired for this, aren't yes. you? Yes. Well, you know, because we, you know, we were able to see this robust business development over the last couple of decades, and with the advent of the internet mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago being integrated in an important tool within business, uh, we had uh, two local companies that started up their own internet service business and uh, one of them uh, over the last five years has been actually building out a fiber network uh, within the city so we have a hundred megabit service and that allows someone who works in a virtual business environment uh, to have the same speed and capability that you would get in a major metropolitan area and this has been a, a very important platform for the business development that we've seen so that's, a, that's another key, that we, which helps attract people. I gather one of the things is the young people who grow up there, you're, what you're trying to do is keep them there so they don't move away. Yeah, great observation, Doug. It's very, very important. That's a challenge for many small, all small communities towns. all over America. That's There's true. no question about it because they are losing their population. They're losing the population to the larger cities. And their uh, economic bases are eroding because of that. They're not able to keep their talent. And many states and uh, cities spend a lot of money to educate uh, young people, and then that educational product is basically leaving uh, the state or leaving the city. So what do so you do to keep them? Well, um, you know, this, this great entrepreneurial environment that we have within the city is something that uh, it's alluring. It's attractive. It, it allows people to stay there. There's an energy to it. There are people who are willing to take risks. There's a lot of creative uh, sharing and endeavoring uh, that, that goes on. So there is new business development, business creation, and that is attractive to, for people to stay. But then the as point Rustin is, there has jobs. mentioned, yeah, there that, are jobs. That's it. Yeah. And as Rustin had mentioned too, because our downtown um, is uh, someplace where you can be entertained, uh, we have a great music scene, a great art scene, many restaurants in the downtown. Those are different elements that people see and they say, I can see myself living and raising a family here. And what about the quality of life itself in Fairfield? We haven't talked about that. Tell me about it. Well, I, you know, Ed mentioned um, that, that metropolitan feel, but yes, it's a small town, and that really enhances the, the quality of life. Doug. Great for, place to raise families. Absolutely. You have a great school system. Yeah. You know, it's one of those small towns where you know everyone, uh, but but that element of, of entertainment, that element of uh, culture and international dining, you know, for example, we have 10 nationalities represented in our restaurant scene. So it's, uh, you know, you can, you can be, you can live a little exciting. Uh, you can li have some excitement when you, when you go out on a, a night in Fairfield. You know, small towns are really great to live in. They really are. I mean, cities have their, their, their great points, but small towns too do. I understand that you were named one of the 15, uh, the, don't get me wrong here, greenest mayors in the country. What, explain what the, was meant by that. Well, in 2008, uh, MSN.com was doing a story about what cities were doing to meet the energy challenges going forward. And they had heard something about uh, what we were doing. And at the time, we were preparing a 10-year strategic plan to lower our energy consumption, transition to renewable energy, encourage more uh, local production of foods, all of those different aspects that we would define as green initiatives. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we sent them a draft of our plan, and they were so impressed that a small city was engaged to this uh, degree that um, I was named one of the 15 greenest mayors in America, along with mayors from a lot of the major cities in America, of San Francisco, Chicago, New York, Miami, Atlanta, and Fairfield, Iowa. So we were very humbled by the award and, uh, and, and by being named that. Well, I think it, it, it's a great honor for you to have that in addition. I wanted to ask you a little bit. Of, you, are, you have a unique health spa. What's the name of it again? Uh, the Raj. And uh, the, it's just a couple of miles north of Fairfield. And it is, one of, it is one of the premier spas in the country that utilizes the uh, Ayurvedic treatment for health. And I don't have a clue what that means. Well, uh, it's an ancient... Um, uh, it's, it's a practice of ancient medicine, but it's a rejuvenation process. It essentially takes someone through um, a process to re-enliven, reinvigorate, and rejuvenate the body through these ancient practices. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, it is very interesting. And as the mayor, let me ask you, how busy is it being the mayor of Fairfield? Population 9,500. Well, you know, it's a part-time job. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a businessman also. But in a small community, you really get a chance to set your own priorities. And in Fairfield, because we have such a great uh, group of, of, of folks, people, you know, families that have been there for generations, along with people that have moved to this uh, community because of the attractive elements that we've talked about, and bringing those things together and setting priorities for creating uh, more business and diversifying our economy, for doing these sustainability initiatives, for creating a place that has a good quality of life and is a great place to live, is something that is 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 really uh, an opportunity of a lifetime for me personally. But as far as what we can accomplish as a community on that scale level, it's um, it, it's very powerful. And I gather one of the other things in your effort is to get the word out about this town. Not only you're trying to keep their people there, you're attracting people as well, right? Did you grow up there? I didn't. I, you know, I've, See, I've lived you came there in a few years, and you know, we we really we like telling our story, whether it's whether it's a, an a article in a national magazine or a national television show or something like this. We use it to get the word out. Thank you so much for telling us. It's a remarkable story, the story of Fairfield, Iowa. Thank you, Doug. Our pleasure to be here. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation that it is today. And now, let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now, it is my honor to present this prestigious award to Ed Malloy, the mayor of Fairfield, Iowa, for the outstanding work his community is doing to help keep moving America forward. Ed, it's a pleasure to give this to you. Congratulations. Doug, thank you very much. It's an honor to accept this on behalf of all the citizens of Fairfield, and it was wonderful to spend some time with you and tell us, tell our story. It's a great story you have to tell, great. truly. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you, Doug. That's it for another edition of Moving America Forward. I'm Bert Tenzer. Join us again as we continue to bring you the entrepreneurs who move America forward. I'm William Shatner, and for all of us at Moving America Forward, thanks for watching.